Good afternoon, gentlemen, and uh, welcome uh, to our roundtable on Zoom uh, from AID ISA and Security Risk Asia from Delhi. Uh, we are uh, really privileged to have all of you here on, for this uh, important subject that is India Nepal relations ideation for resolving the Kalapani issue. As we all know, that India and Nepal ties are very unique. I think they are so unique that it, right, the international relations, one doesn't find uh, a parallel in anywhere in the world. We have an open border. We have virtual rights of citizenship for our citizens. There are kinship affiliations across the border. You have one of the strongest military to military relations between the two countries. As we all know, around 35,000 soldiers are serving in the Indian army who are from Nepal. And this is, I think, something which is uh, not there in any other armed forces in the world. Uh, then there is the tradition of the both army chiefs being the honorary generals in each uh, armed armies. Uh, this uh, is also a very rare thing because we have in the ASEAN countries uh, the uh, generals exchanging various honors, but uh, having a, the chief as honorary is something very unique. At the same time, you find that the relations do go through uh, some uh, rubs and uh, tumbles. Uh, the most uh, important aspect which is immediate before us is the issue of uh, India-Nepal uh, border, which includes the border related to Kalapani, which is uh, from the Lipia Dura area to Kalapani and Ilipule. As we all know, uh, the current developments which have happened in this sphere, and the challenges come when sovereignty issue comes. Sovereignty is one thing which can impact bilateral relations to a very great degree. And this is exactly what is happening here between India and Nepal. There are certain triggers which occur because democracies are answerable to the people and the parliament. So when the sovereignty issue comes, the, uh, there is a, always a public UN cry. The leaders are under pressure and we see a lot of agitation, etc., ongoing. At this point of time, I must say that uh, we are facing the biggest challenge is the uh, publication of the maps. While from the Indian side, the map which was published in the November 2019, it was not a, a new map. The map existed before that. The only new thing was the Union territories created of Jammu and Kashmir state. However, uh, during that time, there was a UN crime in Nepal and there was a threat to publish a new map. Now, again, this time after the road uh, construction has been declared, by the Indian Defense Minister, we have the issue of Kalapani coming and the publication of the map. The uh, important thing to mark here is that Nepal wants that the map, uh, the, a constitution amendment to, in the parliament for the a map to be uh, become a very verified document which is adjudicated by the parliament. I think that has taken this uh, a new turn to this issue and we only hope that things uh, go uh, positive from this side. And to discuss this, I think we have uh, such an uh, eminent team uh, of uh, uh, people, uh, leaders from both sides. Uh, we have from India, Professor S. D. Muni, who's uh, the professor, uh, professor emeritus of the JNU, as well as special consultant with the IDSA. Uh, we have uh, joining with us, Major General Ashok K. Mehta, who's also a very expert on Nepal, having written a number of books. Then we have Major General Umang Sethi, who's a distinguished fellow with the Center of Joint Warfare Studies. On the Nepal side, we have a very important uh, distinguished uh, political leaders as well as academicians. We have Mr. Bishnu Dijal, who's a deputy chief of the NCP Foreign Affairs Committee. We have Raju uh, uh, Nepal, who's a member of the Central Policy Research Academy of the Nepal Congress, the opposition party there. And you have uh, Professor Prema Khanal, who's assistant professor Department of International Relations of Tibur University. We'll start with the opening remarks for the participants. May I request the opening remarks from uh, Mr. Raju Nepal. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And, uh, it was a great uh, honor to be here today the, with the Sansa dignitaries. Uh, let, let me start with the, the comments you just made. Uh, we, our relationship is really really unique and really very good relationship. We have a political relationship, which is very, very, very strong. Uh, beyond politics, our leaders and Indian leaders have relationship, personal relationships. 
uh, even some of their uh, some of our relationship is converted into marriages uh, political leaders civil servants who have a very good relations civil society uh, we have relations everywhere even we have a god to god relations uh, from kashi to pashupatinath and kali gandaki to this we have it's not cultural it's a religious relationship we share hundreds of thousands of people uh visits india every year and hundreds of thousands of people visit nepal from india every year as a religious tourist so relationship is there okay and we we in nepal we value that relation every time all weather all weather but this exactly the same words come from india when there is an issue it should be all weather relationship all the time okay where was this relationship when blockade was implemented to nepal it was not all all weather relationship okay and now the issue of uh, uh, this kalapani and limpodera has come uh, come up again the same words we are hearing where we are hearing and as you uh, said uh, you said uh, if the constitution amendment is approved then it will be in a different course of action it won't in our opinion what uh, the i say and i'm, I'm sure uh, bisnuji will uh say something about it um, a little later uh it, it is uh, the starting of the course we will so we will be making the country will be making the environment for dialogue by doing so the country nepal will be making environment for, of dialogue dialogue is the only way the, we, we will be resolving this issue there is nothing else even about four or five days back about seven of the indian ambassadors to nepal they were talking to one of the major leading newspaper of nepal and all of them said there is a only one way to resolve this issue is a dialogue dialogue and dialogue there is nothing else and this is what nepal is demanding for long for long for back 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 we definitely will come to the dates uh, when our talk progresses so uh, to start with what i am trying i will say is the relationship is very good i fully agree and it will be good it was good it will be good very good but it has to be all with the relationship between nepal and india it's not that when issue comes we should not be saying a oh, relationship is that and all but we have faced several blockages from india okay we have even now if you go to the very small small issues uh, uh, although this is not the time to talk about those there were hundreds of issues not one two three four we should not have any issue in my opinion in my opinion nepal and india whatever relationship we share with each other we should have no issues left but we have hundreds of issues in trade and transit in borders even we're talking about kalapani today we should be talking about sustha some other day and we should be talking about some other issues as well okay uh, this is what i have to say the, to begin with I, i'll be uh saying some more after hearing uh, the dignitaries here thank you very much uh, mr raju was very very uh, important point you made that we have to have a all weather relationship uh, may i now uh, request uh, mr vishnu uh, would you like to comment uh, make your opening comments thank you very much for giving the opportunity uh, i am very much grateful to be here with uh, uh, such a prominent intellectual uh, like professor munishar uh as we all know uh, nepal and india are facing a difficult situation now uh, yes we have a very good relationship uh, we have a, some kind of unique relationship our relationship uh, goes back to centuries uh, it tied with uh, cultural religious some social political relations also but in recent days after india introduced a new map after Uh, reorganization of jammu and kashmir on 2nd of november 2019 nepal objected that with uh, uh, its reservation that uh, this territory which is included into indian map that belongs to nepal nepal sent diplomatic notes to india and after that nepal requested for the foreign secretary label dialogue twice but india did not respond positively at the meantime uh, there was a problem of covid-19 and we both country we are fighting against this pandemic but indian defense minister inaugurated a road to mansarbar uh, which is passed through uh, 
Kalapani area, uh, we, we have already claimed it. So uh, the problem again uh, come to the effect. And uh, we also uh, requested, again, we requested uh, Indian side to have a foreign secretary labor dialogue. Uh, so we, uh, we gave a diplomatic note again. And the situation uh, is not good now, as we all know. So I think uh, we should uh, uh, sit together to resolve this issue uh, because uh, we have uh, experiencing some provocative, provocative speeches here from Indian side also. Uh, there are some so many people who are making the uh, provocative speeches, uh, including Army Chief of India. Uh, you know, we talk about the uh, very old relationship, as old relationship and even our people are serving uh, in Indian army. But uh, the leader of that army, the chief of that army, uh, uh, expressed something about Nepal and uh, he undermined our sovereignty. Uh, and uh, the situation uh, is getting, uh, uh, getting worse than bad now. I still hope that there is a, a much possibility of dialogue between two great countries. We have no option in dialogue. Uh, I hope that some back channels are already activated. And I hope uh, government of Nepal uh, uh, is trying its best uh, hey, one, one, to, have, seven, to have a dialogue between two countries. We have many kind of mechanism, uh, foreign security level mechanism, oh, joint okay, commission between, we are sitting in a webinar. between two, uh, mm -hmm. sorry? Yeah, please go ahead. Please. Uh, uh, and uh, we have a mechanism of uh, joint commission uh, mm -hmm. between two foreign ministers. And I hope that wisdom will prevail and we'll sit together for a dialogue that uh, territory belongs to uh, belongs to Nepal. Uh, the Treaty of 1816 that uh, which demarcated uh, uh, the boundary between Nepal and India. And we have uh, no another treaty except that to demarcate the border of Western Hill region of Nepal and India. Yes, there are uh, other treaties also uh, about uh, the uh, border of Nepal and India. Uh, but about that part, there is no another treaty. So we are confident that we have sufficient proofs, we have sufficient documents, we have sufficient uh, maps to uh, claim that that uh, uh, land is exclusively uh, uh, belongs to Nepal. Uh, and we want to produce all these maps proofs uh, to our Indian friends. For that purpose, we want to have a uh, very grateful, very uh, fruitful dialogue uh, with India. And I hope that uh, we'll be able to convince our Indian friend that that territory belongs to us. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Bishnu. I think uh, you have emphasized on the dialogue portion uh, and we hope the dialogue goes ahead. We welcome uh, General Ashok Mehta. Welcome, sir. Uh, we started a bit early because of the earlier uh, time frame change. We welcome you. We have uh, Mr. Raju Nepal here, who's uh, representing uh, the Nepali Congress. Uh, Mr. Vishnu Rizal, who's uh, uh, representing the NCP. Uh, and uh, we have Prem Khanal, who's from the Tribune University. Uh, Professor Muni, I think you know uh, very well, so I do mm -hmm. introduce him. And we have General uh, Sethi. We have just finished the opening statements uh, by Mr. Nepal, who said that we must have all weather friendship between India and Nepal. We have heard uh, Mr. Vishnu Rizal, part of it you have already heard, who speaks about dialogue. And uh, so we are going into the opening statements. I will just request now Professor Muni uh, to uh, give his opening remarks, sir. May I request you, sir? Yeah. This is for five, five, ten minutes. How much time? Whatever time, uh, basically about first. Well, because you gave you gave us a brief on four points. You yeah, four points we'll be discussing later, sir. But opening about two, three minutes or five. Well, minutes in one. opening, I fully agree with my Nepali friends that we cannot solve it without. Uh, dialogue and discussion. And it is not that dialogue and discussion has not been going on. <clears throat> I think both the sides know each other's position. And there are uh, very genuine, serious differences uh, in the documents and evidences which the two sides have. And that is why, you know, the Border Commission could not resolve these two points, Susta and Kalapani. The rest of the 98% of the border has been resolved. The Nepali side did not want to sign whatever has been resolved. Uh, but, you know, that 
that is their point of view i don't understand because if you don't sign on two points they do not necessarily make a part of the whole agreement but uh, one thing becomes clear that all right this much of the problem has been settled therefore the talks have been going on it's not that we are not interacting on these issues since 1997 Uh, i remember gujral uh, uh, ji has been saying that yes uh, we will uh, you you give us the proof of your possession of the area we will concede it to you so since then it is going on we are talking about it both the sides have their own evidences we will discuss in a short while and i agree that by raising political heat uh, it may serve some purposes i know there is a new wave of nationalism in nepal and somehow unfortunately for us and to a very large extent because of us we committed certain acts which we should have avoided like the blockade like the interference in constitutional system uh, i think uh, the anti indian nationalism is not going to help either nepal or nepal india relations frankly speaking but today everybody is uh, in in nepal is quite focused on i know you know i write tweet i write my articles and the kind of uh, i mean abusive uh, responses which i get on some cases hurts us that uh, you don't agree with my point okay say don't agree with my point if you want to counter my evidence counter my evidence why did why turn down to abuses we don't do this uh, in academic and and that is not the way that we have very close relations for centuries cultural civilizational roti beti economy what not let me tell you one thing else we may have very close relations in the centuries earlier but the future cannot be built upon past <clears throat> the past has got to be really related to the present and future and i think today's nepal and i must say today's india also are very aspirant societies very young societies they are not governed by the uh, baggage of the history and past and uh, to that extent uh, many of people like me in gray are not for them not very relevant uh, but uh, uh, we have to relate this past and these old bonds Uh, into future into developmental engagement into meeting each other's aspirations and i think both sides have failed on that mm-hmm. india largely because india is a big country but you need uh, two to tango you one person cannot arrive at the agreements and uh, i am uh, one of those persons who uh, hold india responsible for a real, very large degree but i also say that nepal too has occasionally for political reasons for their own emotional reasons unnecessarily throwing expense and hatred in this relationship which should have been avoided so i think it is a good exercise that corona is putting various groups into contact with each other we must try and understand each other's aspirations and and expectations and not be governed either by the past uh, you know roti beti and everything it doesn't help it's a good rhetoric it's very comfort uh, comfortable language but in practical terms it is of no use if you don't have trust into each other somehow we have developed a trust deficit we must try and uh, look at the roots of this trust deficit and try and bridge it because i tell you if politics is in place nothing else would be stopped either economic relations or security relations or social cultural relations nothing would be stopped but if politics is not in the place nothing would move this is what we have come to to be today and these days uh, governments and states are not the only player the society has come up in a big way uh, not only social media social media is one major aspect of it but people have their aspirations they have their own visions and unless we understand those visions respect them are sensitive to them i don't think we will be able to build a viable relationship i can later on i can point out areas in which we were one and we have now gone again against each other we have different perceptions now 
uh, so on and so forth. Uh, thank you very much, sir. I think a very important uh, uh, issues which you have raised that we have to now overcome the differences because what is the future generations going to look at? We have passed a very good uh, phase of relations with Nepal. We are coming to possibly a point at which there is going to be, there are some concerns and we should uh, leave uh, for the future a better uh, perspective. I would now request uh, General Uman Sethi to make his opening remarks. General Sethi, sir. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, my, my theme is continuing from what the previous three speakers have said. I'll just make a couple of very small points. Our relationship is so unique. Am I audible, Rahul? Yeah, please. Please go ahead. Uh, our relationship is so unique that perhaps we have started taking it for granted. And uh, they, like it's been said that there are issues which are there between the two countries today which have surfaced in the recent past. But there would be issues which will come up in times to come. And today perhaps is the time to not only look at two, three issues which are now bothering everybody, but also to look at what are the likely things which may go, uh, which may come up again and cause pressures between the two countries. And we should today start looking at a mechanism which can bring down the rhetoric and concentrate not on the narrative, but on outcomes. And outcomes, as far as India and Nepal are concerned, are so interlinked and so important for all of us that we cannot survive without each other's uh, complete understanding and the kind of cultural mix the two countries have the kind of interdependence we have on each other. Both the countries need to look at the existing mechanisms. Can we reshape them? Can we design something better? Wherein uh, the realities of how the societies are turning out, how the politics between the two countries or within the two countries are turning out, how the world is shaping up, and how can we now start looking at uh, certain uh, governmental, political, diplomatic, uh, maybe professional mechanisms, which can then take care of all this. And there is more dialogue, which is beyond uh, just abusing each other, like Professor Muni just said. And we are very distressed on both sides of the border today on social media. There is not much of uh, balanced discourse, but rather sniping at each other, which is taking place. So I would stop here at the moment and uh, we can take this on a little later. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I think you made a uh, very uh, valid points about progressing the dialogue. Now, Professor uh, Prem Kanal, may I request you to kindly make your opening remarks? Uh, thank you, Idea and Secretary Hicks uh, and Asia for inviting me to speak on these topics. This is very important and timely topics to uh, discuss among different experts. I feel honored to express my views on these topics with these highly respected panelists. While talking about Nepal-India relations, both countries have friendly bilateral relations. Two countries are connected by history, culture, tradition, and religion. These relations are close and multidimensional in the sense that both Nepal and India have political, social, cultural, religious, and economic relations. The relations between Nepal and India is based on the principle of peaceful coexistence, sovereign equality, and understanding of each other's aspiration and sensitivity, since both countries established formal diplomatic relations since 1947. Uh, we have the border, uh, we have the bo open border. Both India and Nepal are the members of the United Nations, SARC, BIMISTEC, and World Trade Organizations, and other international organizations. We have different bilateral issues, security, economic trade, transit and investment, cooperation in water resources, agriculture, railway, tourism, border dispute, etc. are the major bilateral issue between India and Nepal. Uh, we have the, uh, different other issue also. Sometimes we have the border issue becomes the more, more one of the um, one of the major issue, uh, which is very disputed, with, uh, which creates the very bad relations between India and Nepal. Uh, both India and Nepal are a uh, developing country. We have many people are living under the in, uh, poverty line. In that case, we need to solve those types of bilateral issues like border dispute. And we need to focus on the economic prosperity 
because uh, both India and Nepal, they are developing country. Uh, they are all, uh, we do not, uh, we always must focus the economic prosperity of our both country. Uh, prosperous India and prosperous, prosperous India and prosperous Nepal are the aspiration of both country uh, people. That's why uh, prosperous or strong Nepal can serve the Indian interest in Nepal. Uh, that's why I, I think if we have uh, we have the border dispute, we need to solve those types of border dispute through uh, through diplomatic negotiation, and we need to create the new atmosphere, and we need to create the um, our relations, which is focused mm -hmm. on economic prosperity between both India, and India and Nepal. Thank you. This is my opening remark. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. I think you made a very important point that uh, the economic uh, prosperity of both countries, the people of both countries particularly at this point of time when the economic growth is going to be hampered by the COVID-19. It is a time for us to sort of resolve these uh, very uh, tricky bilateral issues on territory and focus on economic relations. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor. May I, sir, General Mehta, sir, may I request you now to make your opening remarks? Uh, we just read your wonderful article today in The Wire and you gave a very good insight and very good perspective. I'm sure all of us will benefit from your discourse here. Uh, Namaskar to uh, all my colleagues on this panel, uh, especially to the uh, Nepali friends. <clears throat> I think we've had in the last uh, uh, couple of months, starting in November, a debate, uh, two sets of debates, uh, mainly in Nepal, one after the map and one after the road. And uh, largely in my view to domestic political compulsions in Nepal and this new wave of hyper-nationalism, uh, we have arrived at a crisis situation today. I call this a crisis situation because for the first time, in the history of India-Nepal relations, we have Nepal come out with a map. I think this map is, some people say, first time after 1816. Uh, I would say after 1860. But that's not the issue. The fact is that Nepal has come out with a new map. And for the first time, Nepal has deployed troops they are establishing armed police, armed forces uh, posts on the western border at Changru, at Jabu, near Tinkar. Uh, they are building a road to Tinkar. Uh, so a lot of activity has been triggered off by these crises. But politically, the more uh, dangerous area uh, that this crisis is treading into is the fact that Nepal is considering a constitutional amendment which is being discussed now. It was discussed last yesterday at an all-party meeting in Nepal in Balwatar. And once this constitutional amendment passes, because Nepali, uh, the, the Nepali Congress, uh, the, the Nepal Communist Party is shy of only nine or ten seats. So it's not a question of the passage of the bill. It's the consequences of the passage of the bill. And then this issue will get internationalized. Now that's a very, very serious situation which will damage India-Nepal relations irreparably. And I would therefore urge both sides, urge both sides to tread cautiously and get on to the path of diplomacy as soon as possible. Um, this constitutional amendment and the follow-up action must be preempted, in my view, 
and we should revert to the track of diplomacy. And I have suggested a couple of ways in which uh, diplomacy can proceed further. If the current procedures don't work, I've suggested other means which we can come to later. But we must not allow this situation to move from a dispute uh, into a conflict and we must start some kind of a virtual uh, foreign secretary level meeting immediately. I'll come, come back later. Uh, thank you very much, sir. These are very uh, relevant comments. As uh, all of us have discussed, I think the, the opening remarks is very clear that dialogue is the way forward. I mean, that's what everybody has stressed upon that. That there could be a uh, hyper-nationalism should not turn our differences into conflicts. I think that is uh, what is possibly uh, uh, feared at this point of time because the dialogue is mechanism or at the official level is not working. And we are very uh, uh, thankful that all of us are here. All of you are here and we can at least discuss it at the track two level. And some of you being in the political chair, you'll be able to sort of carry the word forward. So with that as the opening remarks by all of us with a, uh, with a sort of a determination that we want to overcome the differences. Now let us get back to what are the issues which have to be addressed to overcome the differences. And now I'm specifically referring, referring to the Kalapani, Lipu Lake and uh, the uh, Lipia Dhadu issue uh, per se. Uh, the, what is the main issue here? What is it? Is it a cartographic issue as, as uh, General Mehta wrote in his article also and as we all know, is it an issue of the differences over where the Mahakali River starts? Or is it a much more political issue which is there? Is it, does it have any ramifications as far as uh, China is concerned? Because Lipu Lake is a common uh, sort of uh, uh, boundary, uh, some common point between India and China and Nepal, uh, all three of them. So what, what, what is it, the, uh, what is the main, main claim? Because if you can understand, what are the main issues involved in the Lipu Lake, uh, Kalapani and uh, Lipia Dharu uh, factor, I think we can uh, come out as to what solutions should emerge. So with that as the opening remarks, may I request uh, uh, Mr. Bishnu first, uh, would you like to sir, take on uh, this? Uh, what, are, what are your views on this? Thank you, sir. Thank you. The, uh, the problem, uh, we all know that uh, it's about our boundary issue. Uh, we have already talked about 1816's uh, Sugoli Treaty, which is clearly demarked uh, our boundary between then East India and Nepal. So I have already requested you, I have already stated that uh, we had no other uh, treaty than Sugoli to determine the uh, western part, hill region of Nepal and India's border. The, that uh, treaty clearly mentioned that uh, the border is Kali River. And unfortunately, no maps were attached at that time. For, so that we have to look for the available materials now. At that time, East India Company itself had published some maps, some other countries have published the map, which are well deposited in different uh, important libraries, uh, Library of Congress, uh, British Library, yeah. That clearly mentioned that uh, according to our treaty, the origin of uh, Kali is Limpiadura. And subsequent maps uh, prove that the Kali River originates from Limpiadura. Uh, but later, uh, the uh, map uh, were started to be changed, and uh, the uh, Indian side claimed that the uh, border is uh, Lipu Lake. And in fact, in the field now, it is also distorted, and uh, the Kalap now Kalapani uh, is kept inside uh, Indian map. So the problem is that. So we should uh, resolve. Uh, problem from that point, we should start our discussion from that point, which is the origin, origin of uh, uh, Kali River. Uh, we all should be agreed that that is the, from Limpia Dura. And if we have some differences, if we do not agree on that fact, we should go for the subsequent maps, which are available in different uh, libraries, uh, in uh, different uh, uh, books we have seen. So uh, I think, uh, as Nepal claimed that uh, there is there must not be any differences on the origin of Kali River, and Kali River is originates from originated from 
limpia dura so east of kali uh, all the part uh, kalapani uh, lipulek uh, limpia dura it is uh, exclusively um, belong to nepal and uh, munisab uh, uh, rightly stated that during the visit of uh, prime minister in the kumar gujral to nepal in 1997 first time uh, both country agreed to discuss uh, about that boundary which nepal is raging for a long time and at that statement uh, that uh, or sentence has been written there the kalapani area it means that is not only the kalapani the kalapani area is limpia dura and lipulek also so uh, each and every statement after that at least six statement uh, joint statement after the visit of prime minister four prime minister from nepal two prime minister from india they have clearly stated that the kalapani area is a disputed territory and both side will uh, resolve uh, by the uh, by the proofs uh, there uh, there was a meeting uh, there was a committee technical committee uh, of joint secretary level uh, which surveyed all the uh, areas uh, which monisha said that 98% of the border uh, has been already settled down uh, it to be signed and uh, the two places limpia dura and susta sorry kalapani and susta Uh, they were not uh, resolved by that committee and it is under discussion and at this uh, and uh, when 2015 china and india agreed to make a common point to lipulek pass nepal uh, immediately uh, responded with its reservation that it belongs to nepal also uh, nepal sent diplomatic note to india and china uh, fortunately we got the response we'll, from yes. chinese side sorry i will we'll cover sorry. that in the next part so oh, but please, uh, please, please. Uh, but yeah, i think you are very uh, identified uh, from the nepal point of view it is the source of the mahakali river if i got you correct is lipulek yes. that the limpia dharu sorry sorry limpia dura limpia, limpia dharu is what you consider the source yeah. yeah, yeah. that is your basic issue yes, uh, yes. i will now go to professor prem uh, you are an academic sir and you have very detailed uh, study of uh, the various uh, issues uh, from the academic academic point of view uh, what in your uh, point of view is the main Uh, issue here as far as the kala pani thing is concerned what is the crux of the whole issue professor professor kanal yeah professor kanal please yes can, can you hear me professor both country exchange prem ji aap bolie yeah please okay, okay. Uh, yeah yeah Okay, I think we are we are not able to hear you. We are not able to hear you. We'll just come back to you. Nepal once. Nepal claim is that. Uh, uh, professor, we are not able to hear you at present. Article five of. Hello, Professor. Professor Prem, we are not able to hear you. I'll just come back to you. I'll just come back to you. I'll request uh, Professor Modi sir uh, for your kind uh, comments on this claims. i think bishnu ji has started with 1816 treaty and both india and nepal accept 1816 treaty there is no dispute about it the problem is the ambiguity in the treaty i'll tell you one or two things one you have already pointed out that it did not carry any meaning any any maps uh, but maps were published after the treaty and two sets of maps were published one from 1816 to 1860 and second set of maps after 1860 after 1860 you have some maps which show uh, uh, this area into india one of the map i put it on even my twitter uh, which uh, kanak mani has also carried in his article and there are many other maps it, it so creates some the first problem arises from the fact that there are two sets of maps one set of map shows what nepal is saying its position another sets of maps show what india is saying is its position so there is a dispute now secondly treaty and maps are one set of evidence there are other sets of evidence also the other sets of evidence is the uses possession uh, the citizens who are living people who are living there uh, whose their surveys have been done their tax revenues are there uh, their uh, ration cards are there their aadhar cards are there and here again both nepal and india have their own evidence let us be very clear so number 1 on the maps and on the treaty 
both the sides have their evidences second on other items also they have their own evidences and it is a fact that before the gorkha kings took this area this route which has been objected today was being used for kailash mansarovar yatra by all the pilgrims hindu pilgrims mostly from india you know the 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 go the nepal king nepal as it is known today was brought in by prithvi narayan shah you know before that india existed in a different way nepal existed in a different way but kailash mansarovar has been a route for a very very long time so that is yet another kind of evidence further in the modern period why it is that nepal had not raised any objections before 1980 and you know in my nepali friends know that in nepal people are knowledgeable of saying that yes king knew that there is a army post from india in the area king mahendra and he allowed it in fact army post in that area is started building up after 1955 the whole issue is started not not with mahendra with mp koirala when after what what happened in china Uh, both india and nepal were worried that chinese may do something here there so let us have our security done and at that time nepal wanted its armed forces to be modernized therefore an indian military mission was stationed in nepal for many years to modernize the nepalese army and one of the part of the indian military mission was to set up check posts on nepal china border which were all held by the indians in in collaboration with the nepalese soldiers to whatever it there were about 16 or 18 or 14 you know check posts there check post uh, starts from the so called border pillar 1 which is in lipu lake there is no border pillar which nepal has before lipu lake and lipu lake is considered by india and china nepal is now refusing it but earlier nepal also accepted that as the tri junction so even when the chinese sign an agreement with you they say lipu lake is a tri junction when they sign an agreement with us they say lipu lake is a tri junction and the the chinese signed that agreement with india not only in 2015 uh, vishnu ji even in 1954 agreement lipu lake is mentioned as one of the transit routes between india and china therefore uh, on the international count now go to the united nations what map did you produce before the united nations that was your first recognition as a nepal the map produced to the united nations does not have this new new additions which you have done in the map then there are documents in in nepal in nepal survey documents lipu khola has been at two three places mentioned as the source of kali kali river in nepali documents under nepali surveys it has been mentioned about this now here again between as i said the, the difference between 1816 and 1860 is that 1816 was a treaty signed within 1816 treaty it is written very clearly that the two sides will survey the whole area and the tarai portions which were added to nepal later on on the request of nepal king were actually added after the survey is being done now i don't have seen yet any evidence if the survey of this region was also done but i guess that after 1860 you have different maps therefore they might have come out by whatever the british had surveyed them so the british had their own uh, problems most of the uh, uh, brothers try and understand most of india's border problems with the neighbors are creation of the british there were three four lines macmon line is a problem durand line is a problem the red cliff line is a problem there are all kind of lines which india is dealing with it so it is a it is a problem handed over to us or it is an area handed over to india by the british when you say indian encroachment no indian there is no new indian encroachment the nepalese knew for a long time that indians were there he, they are even having their establishments there king mahendra did not raise problems your survey maps show that the origin is kali in other, <coughs> other areas 
Kali origin is uh, Limpua Dura. That is also right. So I said, what I'm saying is, both sides have their problem. The best way is to sit down, assess and weigh those evidences, and find out the results. And two things are, uh, uh, you know, not evidences. In international law and any law, possession is considered 50% of the claim. And in, 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 in local understanding, silence is considered half of the consent. So Nepal has been silent for a long time, and India has been in possession of the area for a long time, which is additional factors from the evidences which we have. I think this is all I want to say about the evidence. If there is any new point comes up, I'll say. Thank you very much, sir. I think you brought out some very important point from the international perspective as to what is considered as evidence, and you highlighted the various examples over the years. May I request uh, Mr. Raju Nepal, sir, would you like to uh, now make your comments? This is specific to the claim, sir, uh, so that uh, we are uh, have a good understanding of from the Nepal point of view. Uh, uh, thank you, the, sir. But you see, uh, rather than the, these things, what we're talking about, the claims, what are the laws, what are the uh, issues, uh, how to claim it, this should be sorted out by the technical people at the uh, table. Where well, today our main objective is to de-escalate the situation, what is happening between two countries. Okay, but first let's see. First, uh, the, I just would like to say something about the silence part. Uh, Nepal is not silent. Jibi uh, Koirala raised this point with the Atal Bihari Baspi. Uh, Susil Koirala, when he was a prime minister, he sent a note both to China and India when uh, that I agreement is done in 2015. That doesn't mean silence. And when well, this time... I, guess, I said silence for 150 years. For the last 30 and, years, and, no and, silence. Agree. The second thing is, uh, from, from the very beginning, it is accepted by both the countries that this is disputed land. When we both of, both of us agreed that this is uh, disputed land, there is no question of being silenced. One. Uh, second is possession, does, possession doesn't mean that it, the, the land belongs to you. Uh, that is another part. There is uh, so many things in our personal life I, also it is happening. Now, why situation got escalated and what we should do is the first thing we need to talk about. Uh, because of two reasons. We were talking, there was a committee to talk about it. Uh, uh, the, the secretary level committee was discussing about it because of COVID-19 and some other issues. India is not very keen on talking about it or coming to the dialogue table that you, uh, all Indians or Indian uh, think tank, it's all the time saying India should sit with Nepal. I, I hope we will be talking about it at the, at the end. Dialogue is the only way. And Nepal has Nepal's um, foreign minister about five or six days back. He said we are ready for dialogue, but there is no response from India even today. Even today, uh, but now the, we are saying the Indian side is saying it's because of the COVID-19. We're talking after COVID-19. One, the situation got escalated because of the inauguration of the road. And when we both know uh, the territory is disputed land, the inauguration was done one. And second, and the most uh, uh, provocating things happened when uh, Indian Army chief made some comment about it. And we fear, uh, we fear the world's largest democracy, where civil, civilian democracy, civilian supremacy is uh, considered is the best in the world, almost in the world, by, uh, by after hearing his comments about political issues, is India uh, shifting their paradigm shift towards military supremacy against the uh, civilian supremacy or war? This is what the skeleton factor. Uh, uh, Muni sir has raised some points about hates and all it is happening in both the ways. Uh, we regret for that. You must have seen what happened to Manisha Koirala about a week back when she uh, said something, she wrote something in tweet. Not only from the public, even the Indian whole media was against her. Whole media was against her. This is happening, this is bad, we must stop it. This is bad and we must stop it. But here, we, at this point in time, what are our claims and what is India's claims? That is to be sorted out by the 
people of that field, I would say the surveyors, civil servants, political leaders, civils and all, technical people, not us. We, we, our job is to make the environment for dialogue. We must start dialogue immediately. Immediately from the various level. If we start and, and uh, the, uh, uh, Munisar has said some Aadhaar card and uh, so, uh, as you rightly said, you might have Aadhaar card in our system, we have those people living in that area, they were voting in our voting system. They were paying tax to our Nepal. We call this Malpot, that is called the land ownership tax. Malpot to Nepal government. We do have that paper as well. But it's those are revenue, revenue documents, I said. The revenue documents, we yes. call this Malpot. <clears throat> revenue, the land revenue, the land revenue things. Yes, I so mentioned that. There are things, okay, that is why it is disputed, right? But disputed things, who is to finalize? Who is to tell whether this is right or this is wrong? That's at the table. And our request, and I, I hope you, both of you will agree, uh, that India is not ready to sit at the table one. And uh, Mr. Mehta, General Mehta also rightly pointed out from both the side, somehow there is... You know, nationalism is coming in a very different way. Different way. And the, the, the too much of nationalism, I don't know where it, uh, is it taking to, uh, to us in India and in uh, Nepal also. So we have to be very, very, very careful in that line also. So instead of going towards on producing the document, what document we have, what map we have, what we have submitted to the UN by our forum here, we should give the solution how to solve it. The solve is only dialogue, only dialogue and only dialogue. No hate speech, no hate, hate talks and all. When you talk about hate things, Nepali media have not spoken anything against Indians. Few people, few people might have written something in tweets or Facebooks. I fully agree. But look at the Nepali media. But look at the Indian media. The, the major victim of the Indian media is Indian people. We know that. But still, look at the Indian media, what, what they're doing at this point in time. So from where it's happening, let's de-escalate that thing first. Then let's make uh, uh, these things. And, and, and regarding mapping, uh, disputed land, when a country uh, inaugurates uh, the land, uh, road, and when the country, uh, the country's army chief sends something, says something, Nepal has its right to issue the map. Nepal has its right to right to uh, claim uh, claim the land, which it is being doing for long, and pass the uh, map from the constitution. Thank you very much. Sir. I think uh, you have highlighted a couple of issues that, of course, we we were discussing the claim so that we get a general you know perspective as to where we should start with. Uh, may I now request General Mehta, sir, to, if you could kindly put in. Uh, your uh, uh, view on this particular important aspect, which has now been uh, discussed uh, in fair amount of detail, but your sharp perspective will be very important. Yeah, sharp indeed. Um, uh, let me start by uh, uh, by mentioning that uh, during my walks since 1959, to date from Mahakali to Mechi, I have come across sources of the river and water which are named like Pokhri Pani, Tato Pani, Chiso Pani, Jumle Pani, Rato Pani, and Kala Pani. It should have been actually Kalo Pani if it was on Nepal side. But I know that I know that this is a very, very emotional issue for the Nepalese because there is a military post on allegedly Nepalese soil, an Indian military post on Nepalese soil, not just one, there is one at Navi Dang also. And these ITB posts patrol right up to Lipu Lake Pass. Uh, the second point I want to make is on the source of the 
Mahakali River. Uh, according to what I know from the maps, that source of the Kali River, of the Mahakali River, is east of Kalapani. And from east of Kalapani, it goes further slightly east and follows the watershed principle and joins somewhere near Tinker Pass. That only a map can explain. And that is the stand of from the 87 map. That, so you have Limpia Dhura, you have Lipu Lake Pass, you have Kalapani, and you have Tinker Pass. These are the four sources of the river that have been identified. And the technical or the techies have not been able to uh, establish firmly and formally which of these is the correct one. So that debate continues to go on. About Kalapani Post, let me tell you something. If you read my book, Royal Nepal Army Facing the Mars Challenge, then in that it is clearly mentioned that in 1952, when the Indian military mission was established at the request of King Prabhuvan, 21 milit border check posts were established. And according to Buddhi Narayan Shreshtha's book, Border Management, those check posts started from a place called in the in the in the in the uh, in the west uh, near Tinker Pass. I'm going to Changutap in the east near Mechi. Two places, Lipu Lake Pass and Kalapani were not included. Kalapani and Lipu Lake Pass were not occupied as part of the border check post. And Nepalis, when Nepalis say that India vacated the 20 posts and did not vacate this post, that is wrong. In 1971, we were asked to vacate, or rather 1970. 79. No, in 1970, sir. Sorry, 1979. Yeah, 1970. 69. The, the posts were vacated <clears throat> in 1970 when the Indian military mission was downgraded to Stores Liaison Group in Kathmandu. And I was there at that time in Kathmandu. Uh, so that historical fact of Kalapani ever having been occupied as, as a border check post is wrong. The, the next point I want to make is on the, on the dispute that started after India produced this map on 2nd of November, 2019. I was again in Nepal at that time. I would request Nepalese. I would urge the Nepalese to look at the old map and look at the map that was produced in November 2019. There is no difference. So why was there this hue and cry in Nepal when these two maps were produced? When the second map was produced? Nobody looked at the map. Whether in fact, it was any different from the map that was produced before the new political map after JNK reorganization. Nobody looked at that. So please look at that, my Nepali friends. And if you see there is no difference, then I have to rest my case. India has to rest its case. As far as the road is concerned, as far as the road is concerned, the road, blacktop road has been built for the last 12 years, it is under construction. The entire Nepali establishment, the security establishment knew this road is being constructed. 
2008. Why? Why is it? Why is it that only after Rajnath Singh tweeted, in in my in my view, he should not have. He should have just kept quiet about it. The moment he tweeted, there was another storm. Quite unnecessary. And the last point I want to make on these claims and counter claims, and I say this very responsibly, very responsibly, in 1992 or 93, former foreign minister of Nepal, I have said this before in Kathmandu in August 2015, at a seminar organized by Sunil Kesi, what I'm now going to say, that in 1992 or 1993, former finance minister and former foreign minister Rishikesh Shah at the India International Center gave me a map, gave Ashok Mehta a map of Nepal of 1923 vintage, signed by Chandar Shamsher, Jang Bahadur Rana, and the British political resident, in which Jang Bahadur Rana had gifted Kalapani area to the British at that time. And I say this again, very responsibly, that I have that map. So that map should also be considered as part of the documents that we are considering now. And my, my, my very uh, last point I want to make is that, uh, you know, as everybody is saying, you can say this and I can say this. You will say that and I will say this, but we will not come to any resolution. This matter is a matter concerning India-Nepal relations. It, 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 it has ramifications of our military relations. We have the most unique military relations between India and Nepal, where Nepalese soldiers are in the Indian Army. And the army chief in Nepal and the army chief in India are honorary generals of each other's armies. And there's a whole host of things that happens between ex-servicemen from the Indian army in Nepal, between uh, the Nepal army and the Indian army. And all this will get damaged because there are domestic political compulsions. I think what is currently happening is about 80% domestic political compulsions. I agree that India has made mistakes. Perhaps India has dragged its feet on giving a date for talks. Equally, the Prime Minister of Nepal has been very, very insensitive about comments in Parliament about the Indian flag, the Indian emblem, and about the violence. No prime minister will talk about a friendly neighbor with which we claim civilizational and special relations the way the prime minister has spoken. I do not know what overcame Oliji. He's a very, very remarkable erudite politician. And so there must be some very, very compulsive reasons for him to have said what he said. And the last thing is, and this has to be said, that India realizes that at the moment, there is a left communist government in Nepal with an overwhelming political majority at local level, at the National Assembly, at the lower house, in the provincial governments. This is an unprecedented political power situation. In till 2023, nothing will change. And the, and, and the government of China and the Chinese have taken full advantage of this. And 
it is india uh, nepal is a sovereign country it's its choice the kind of relations it wants to maintain with china but china must also be sent uh, nepal must be sensitive to india's security concerns of what happens and therefore i think as all of us have said that we must we must persuade a uh, goad and urge our political class in both countries to immediately take recourse to diplomatic talks immediately uh, thank you very much sir i think uh, very relevant and as i said very sharp comments uh, what has uh, very clearly emerged is that we must go in for a very early dialogue because the sensitivities on both sides have been hurt in many ways and these sensitivities on both sides at some points in some issues they have been hurt in a, for realistic reasons on some issues they have been hurt on artificial reasons as reasons as general beta pointed out for example the map is a very classic case uh, when you have a map which was published purely from the point of view of showing the union territories of jammu and kashmir being divided post the uh, constitutional amendment which were made by uh, the parliament of india if uh, that was the issue but i think we did not even look at the previous map and the whole thing started so similarly i think sensitivity on both sides have to be respected uh, where he has all accepted that india has also made certain errors is not uh, quickly uh, addressing these issues so may I, uh, with that as a backdrop may i now request professor prem uh, would you kindly join in and give your comments on, on the claims and the other issues can you please uh, give your comments sir it is my turn yeah please pray, professor uh, okay pray. thank you thank you so yeah. much i uh, i have some technical problem previous so sorry for that no yeah I, I, yeah both countries they have their own claims nepal has also same uh, different types of claim and india has also different claims then in international relations if there is any dispute or any problem we can solve those types of problem through dialogue that's why uh, both country they have their own claims and counter claims that's why why we are um, we are not ready to solve those types of problem because both country agree kalapani and sushta is the disputed land disputed in the sense that 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 problem is not solved that's why we have the different mechanism we have the mechanism under foreign secretary we have the technical committee technical working committee also that's why if both country are agree uh, kalapani and sushta are not are the problem which is not solved until it then in that sensitive case then when india um, make the new map and when they uh, uh, make the new road then it creates the some problem in nepal also that's why though we have the problem both country agree we have the boundary problem that's why it is the right time to solve those types of long term problem because we both country in india and nepal we have the strong governments then it is the right time to solve boundary issue uh, then when we solve the boundary issue we can create the good relations between india and nepal that's why instead of uh, claim and counter claim it is the right time i uh, uh, we can we can give those types of issue to the negotiator yeah. in nepal side also we have some some proof we have some historical documents we have the some some uh, some maps and other proofs and india side also you um, general mehta and professor muni already told that they have their own own claims and they have their own documents that's why we bring both side we bring those types of documents gt maps and other documents in the negotiation table while we are negotiating each and every issue then we can find the solution that's why our uh, now it is the time to solve the border problem instead of we are not using the, those types of border issue as a to gaining the power in the national politics that's why uh, it is the it is a new time it is not uh, 1860 it is a 2020 because we have a different scenario old politics is changing so india is also a rising power india wants to be a uh india also wants to be a regional power and india also wants to be a global power in this scenario we want to solve the old problem and we we want to move from the uh we want to move from the old problem that's why uh my my point is that we have both country we have different claim and counter claim that's why we want to bring those types of issue in the uh, negotiation table and we can solve uh, the border problem and we can move ahead from border problem to other 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 issue uh, thank you very much professor i think you have uh, highlighted the importance of 
uh, solving the games, the various mechanisms which are available, which was also my uh, next issue which we are going to discuss. But uh, I think we have already discussed this issue very uh, uh, badly, uh, uh, adequately so far. That is, what attempts have been made for resolution of the issue? And we have discussed the Joint Technical Committee. We have discussed the uh, uh, Foreign Secretary's uh, group, uh, which was, which was, which should have met possibly sometime back immediately, but has not met for whatever reason. And now we have this COVID thing going, so the mechanism uh, will, may, may take time, though all of us do desire here that that should happen very quickly. So these are the attempts and, and many other issues, which those attempts have uh, either been not made very strongly or the attempts have not worked so far. And I think those have been covered, so I'll straight away get on to the next point of my issue. Then we have in the, in the neighborhood, in South Asia also, we have certain models where the boundary issues have been resolved very amicably. Now we have a very uh, important model between India and Bangladesh, and uh, which has not only the land boundary, but you have the maritime boundary, which has been resolved. Then you have various models which are there across the world, not only in South Asia. So boundary issues is a common problem, not only in our region. It's not typical to India and Nepal. It's not typical to South Asia. The boundary issue is typical to many countries. We have in ASEAN countries, Malaysia and Singapore last year had a, a huge uh, problem about their maritime boundary. Uh, then you have uh, the issues which are happening uh, in uh, Europe uh, as well. We have issues in various other parts of the world. So in that situation, uh, the, the, some of the issues have been very well resolved. So where are, what are the, uh, the uh, models of these possibly which we can apply to the Indo-Nepal issue at present? Which are the models which can be applied or which cannot be applied and we have to look at some fresh models? And for this, I think we'll have no better expert than Professor Muni who can give uh, guide us on the, what are the models and how uh, how are they whether they can be applied or not applied? So over to you, sir. Well, I, I before I come to the models, may I make a small point about you know take you back to the withdrawal of the uh, Indian post from Nepal sure, and sure. continue and continuation of the post in uh, in in Kalapani area. You know what changed was the Nepali perception of security. From 1949, that is when the Chinese came, and you will recall, Mao made a point uh, which many of the Nepalese are forgetting or don't want to recall it, when he said, by taking Tibet, I have taken the palm, and there are five fingers which we have to liberate. And those five fingers were Ladakh, Nepal, Sikkim, Bhutan, and Arunachal Pradesh, what we call it. Nepal, he had included to be liberated in terms of because Nepali kings, don't forget that, this, this is what. So it was this threat perception which brought us together on the 1950 treaty and which also brought us together on the joint uh, border posts. Now I accept and agree with you that you no longer, Nepal no longer feels threatened by China. Very good, no problem. But Indians feel threatened by China. And if Indians feel threatened by China, look at what is happening on the line of actual control, right or wrong. There may be excesses from the Indian side, there may be excesses from the Chinese side, but the relationship is not very smooth. Therefore, we will have to maintain the posts and we will have to guard our security. The Darchula Road was a part of the modernization or upgradation of the defense structure in India vis-a-vis -vis China. Besides, and, and it is not only Darchula Road which India has made. This road was started in 2008. General Mehta is right that it has taken 12 years. But there are roads in Arunachal Pradesh, there are roads in Sikkim, there are roads in Ladakh which have been upgraded. It is a part of the overall structure of infra defense infrastructure being upgraded. It had nothing to do with often the Nepalese perceptions or Nepalese sensitivities. Nepal has taken it as an exception, taken it as an offense, which is unfortunate, and the whole problem has been created. So our changing security perceptions are one of the reasons, and that change is that China is no longer bothering you, but China is continuing to bother us. Now I come to the, there are three broad patterns under which the territorial issues have been uh, resolved. And I may say here 
that unlike the, I'm sorry for mentioning China, but we are academic, we have to mention, don't take it an offense. It is not relation to, in relation to Nepal. That Chinese are territorial nationalists. They don't concede territory anywhere. Look at Vietnam. I have seen the Sino-Vietnamese border agreement very, very carefully. And they, you look at the, the repeated problems which come on uh, Everest or whatever else it is. India is not a territorial nationalist country. Let me tell you very frankly. And let me give you examples. India surrendered Kachatihu to Sri Lanka. After almost uh, how many? For, from 47 to 74. We went on debating. Eventually, we gave it up. India has not made a fuss about Bangladesh recently on the territorial boundaries. I would say China has been sitting on Aksai Chin since 1958, not now, now before 1962. We have not made uh, a big issue out of that. And there are examples in India where they were willing to accept line of actual control as the border between Pakistan and India. Forgetting about uh, uh, Gilgit Baltistan and uh, Pakistan occupied Kashmir, which of course uh, Modi government has revised, but on I can give you several examples. So India is not territorially hungry. Let me put it put it to you in a very clear manner, and therefore uh, we have given territories earlier also. Sri Lanka, I gave you example. Bangladesh, I gave you example. Aksai Chin, I gave you example. POK, I gave you example. And therefore, don't consider that we are territorially hungry. This is one model of where you can swap territories. You can walk out of the territories. You can swap territories. Recall the China offered a swapping of the territory, which Nehru refused. But now India is willing to have swapping of the territories with China, which China is refusing. So the second model of solution is swapping of the territories. Third model of solution is holding on to possessions, which is line of actual control, which is the meaning of line of actual control. Remain wherever you are. Now, whatever status quo is, don't disturb it in one way or the other. And the fourth model of solution is on lease, that you can take a territory on perpetual lease. It's a voli treaty. For the land given back, the British had agreed to give money to Bardars and others. Please look into the details of the treaty. And later on, the Raja did not accept it. So he said, no, give us more territory. So Tarai's portion that Kanchanpur Kelali area was added to them. And mm -hmm. it is written in the treaty because now we are giving you territory. We will no longer give you money. You know, which is a kind of a, a strange arrangement. Since you are asking me for the models of solving a uh, border issue, these are some of the ways in which border issues, when the dispute uh, on documents, etc., is not resolved. You know, like Kachathiwu, dispute on document, etc., was not resolved. Bangladesh, dispute on documents, etc., was not resolved. Bilaterally, it is not resolved. Then also, you can solve it bilaterally by one of these uh, measures. I'll stop here. Uh, very, very important points you have made, sir. I have the, what you have tried to intend that these issues, if they, it cannot be resolved in a technical manner, a political uh, resolution is possible. Yes. Political resolution has been made only possible. Only way out, not only possible. That's the only yeah. way out. Yeah. That's the only way out. Or, the case, or, or, or if uh, Nepal and India wants, okay, let us, like the East India Company and the Raja of Nepal, put our forces against each other, which would be very stupid on our part. No, I don't think at present we are even no, deciding that. that. You, you are theoretically yeah. talking about solutions. Yeah. So, uh, you are very correct, sir. I mean, there are various models are available. And those models, I think, uh, can uh, be used or applied in this case as well. So, let me go on to Professor Prem. Sir, you will also be studying these models uh, uh, very, very carefully in the past. Uh, could you suggest any other uh, solution or uh, agree or whatever has been said, uh, Professor Prem, sir? Uh, yeah, uh, we only talk about the uh, in political labor. We need to be uh, political solutions of this problem because we have the different types of dimension about India and Nepal relations. Uh, diplomatic dialogue is the main tool to find a solution of border problem between India and Nepal. Uh, first, we need to create the uh, positive atmosphere for diplomatic dialogue to resolve the boundary issue. Uh, to solve those types of uh, 
boundary issue, uh, we need to talk about the uh, in political level, both country prime minister, they need to talk urgently because now a situation is uh, instead of going to better, it is going to worse. That's why uh, that is that is first we need to create the good atmosphere for for the dialogue. Maybe we need to go back to the different uh, historical documents and treaty and others. We can we can follow different types of models like give and take, like like India and Bangladesh. They also have a similar types of solution. They can give one country give some some land to the other and some country get some other land. But those types of so solution we can find on the proper negotiation with proper historical documents. That's why, my, in my point, in my view, in the beginning, urgently we can we need to do some virtual meeting between India and Nepal Prime Minister level because we have already virtual meeting between both country Prime Minister. Then another issue is uh, we do not need to make any Kalapani issue. Do not make the both countries a prestigious issue because when this issue. Uh, will rising at that time one country need to come back or there are there are maybe other solution also if we make Kalapani or other border is, issue as a prestigious issue because it will be created more problem because South Asian people especially in India Nepal and other countries people are more emotional than European and other other, other country that's why uh, we, we both country people India and Nepal they do not make the uh, Kalapani issue as a as a uh, prestigious issue. Another is to solve those types of problem. We have other other non-state actors or other other media, intellectual people are very important to solve these types of problem. Track to diplomacy is also follow. But particularly if we talk about the uh, which model is suitable to solve the border issue, we have different types of model. Uh, if we talk about Nepali case, we have we have the Sagarmatha dispute with China. We we talk with China on the basis of different maps, historical documents, and proof. Like same way, we can solve the uh, those Kalapani Lipule historical documents and different treaties and old maps and other documents also. That's why first we need to sit together uh, for diplomatic dialogues. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. I think very important point you made. Uh, Mr. Raju, uh, would you like to say something on this as to what type of a model from the neighborhood? Oh, yeah. uh, very, very, uh, I, I just want to say a few things. Uh, here, uh, the dispute is about only about the river. Okay, which one is Kali River? Okay, which one is Kali River? So, just identifying, there are some models of uh, identifying the river, or the river's name. Nepal is saying this is Kali River, this is the uh, starting point of the river, and India is saying something else. This is not the one, this is the river. We have solved uh, this exact problem in our eastern part of the border with India itself, in Mechi. We've already solved the issues, as uh, all of us uh, know, 98% of the border issues is solved. Why don't you take the same approach like we did in the east? to the west and solve the issue of origination of the, from where the river originated. And the problem is solved. And one, if it is not done, as uh, 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 Munisar has uh, rightly said, swap, lease, and all so many other things, we, we, we have also discussed about it. Although there is no uh, proper discussions is taking place, some of the leaders have started raising these points again and again in Nepal at a personal level. But it might get, uh, it, it will be a table of talk in the future. It will definitely be a table of talk in the future because some of the very prominent leaders have started it. Before, before the artificial nationalism at the of the both countries you know, exclude, it explodes, let's sort it out by sitting at a table. I'm using the word artificial nationalism. And don't, I request all Indian friends, all Indian le uh, leaders, all Indian, uh, uh, you know, the, the think tankers that never ever try to bring China in between this. This is the problem between India and Nepal, and we too will solve it. Neither China nor any other uh, things. We don't need anyone to solve this problem. We can solve it together, Nepal and India. Period. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Vishnu, would you like to say something on the models uh, can, yes. can, which can be applied in this case? Yeah. Before going to this, uh, to talk about solution, I have to add uh, two, three things. Yeah, please. First, there is a mis misunderstanding and misperception in India that this issue has been raised in Nepal, raised by Nepal due to China or due to domestic politics. Both are very nonsense thing. They are not accurate. 
this also underestimates nepal's sovereign right nepal's independence and nepal's uh, right to defend the first thing uh, i would like again remind you that both country agreed that kalapani is a disputed territory since 1970 uh, 1997 to till the date it is under discussion and it is taken as a disputed territory and india released map by including this disputed territory and nepal reacted with diplomatic note and nepal seek, uh, asked for a uh, foreign secretary level meeting india didn't reply i have already mentioned it at the same time india inaugurated road through that disputed territory so it is very natural thing to react by nepal because according to the accepted agreement that is the disputed territory and that disputed territory must not be utilized unilaterally by any country this is the very right of nepal first of all i would like to make it clear and general mehta with my due respect i would like to request you it is not a hue and cry it is the matter of sovereignty it is the matter of independence and it is the matter of right of nepali people yes you, you have your claim we have our claim and so we are requesting you please come to the table we are ready to discuss we are ready to produce our evidence at the table to prove that that land belongs to us but you are refusing to sit to discuss about the meeting about the matter and at the meantime you open the road from that disputed territory so don't you think that it is our right to react so how can you say sir this is the hue and cry no this is not hue and cry okay sir uh, how about the so, models any suggested so, so first thing have? first thing sir sir it's it's very objectionable and this mentality may not lead us to the solution first we should start to answer the question what is the problem how it is created i don't want to go back to the history our historian uh, boundary expert are enough to explain about the history professor muni is here professor muni is a very knowledgeable and very very respected intellectual who knows many thing everything about nepal india relations and more or less i agreed with his points very logically is raising the point here that should be considered that should be discussed but to blame any country to accuse any country that kind of discussion no, actually uh, there's no blame then, there's no blame like we are just stating what general beta said was he's compared the facts so that's uh, there was no blame as such and he, he no, also i i so, so, so i uh, no sir i don't i don't want that is based on the fact because uh, yeah, let me okay. complete in 2015 india and china made an agreement on lipu lake nepal reacted at that time no party doesn't matter and one thing some of our indian friends are continuously raising that this is nepal government is trying to this uh, trying to raise this thing due to its internal or domestic crisis no it is not the matter of any party it is not a matter of only any government so we are going to pass it from the parliament in nepal it is a national consensus it is the matter of unity and all political parties are agreed to issue the new map so i would like to request to understand the sentiment of nepali people yes i want to see india not as a territorial uh, uh, territorial uh, i think uh, i mean uh, any kind of aggression it is much bigger than nepal 22 times bigger than nepal at the largest democracy of the world it is a very world neighbor of ours i and we want to have a very good relationship with india so we talk about the relationship between nepal and in india it is not necessary to drag china here yes china and india they have their one difference they have their one problem we better understand and if i i, I hope i don't think so but if they would have some kind of war that won't be from nepal they have a long territory that they have joined so i think that when we talk about our relationship we should 
limit this within our own relationship. Please do not try to drag any other's country. It is ultimately underestimate of our independent, underestimate of our sovereignty. Right, sir. I think uh, we, we have covered your uh, very sentimental and attached views. I think we very respectfully, we do respect that and we do honor that. Let me assure you, all of us have very uh, deep regard for the respects of the Nepali leaders and the Nepali people. Uh, now I request General Mehta, sir, if you have uh, what type of models which are there in the, in regionally or globally where we can possibly apply in this situation. Yeah, before I uh, address that, particular issue. I just want to uh, go back to what Vishnuji has said um, on uh, Nepal's point of view about the road, the Lake Pass and the map. I want to remind him that only last week Nepal's foreign secretaries uh, Mr. Bairagi met the Chinese ambassador on Lipu Lake Pass. This is in all Nepali newspapers. And the, the Nepali, uh, the Chinese ambassador reportedly has said that this is a bilateral matter between Lipu Lake Pass is a bilateral matter between India and China. And as far as Kalapani is concerned, Kalapani is a bilateral matter between India and Nepal. And as far as the border issue is concerned, whether it is Tri-Junction or Kalapani or Lipu Lake Pass, until the border dispute with China, India-China border dispute is resolved, the tri-junction area cannot be fixed. And the location, uh, the, the problem about Lipu Lake Pass cannot be solved. So these are bilateral and trilateral matters. The tri junction part. Now, on the uh, models, in addition, uh, yes. in, addition, in addition to what Professor Mani has said, uh, I covered some of these in my article in the Quint yesterday, uh, but there is an issue that uh, Mr. Rajal Vishnuji raised question about sovereignty. This is a very, very serious issue. And if you will recall that at the very beginning, I had said that uh, for Nepal, Kalapani is a highly emotional issue. It's a very serious issue because according to the Nepalese, the ITBP post Kalapani is on Nepalese soil. And the whole border dispute revolves around one word, that is Kalapani. Because of that military post, if you look at Chinese uh, Nepali maps, including their tourist maps, all of them show Kalapani on Nepalese soil. Their official maps show Kalapani on in Nepalese maps. So Kalapani cannot be wished away by my saying that it comes from a tributary east of Kalapani, or Mr. Rajal saying that it comes from Limpia Dura. There is the problem. But on the question of sovereignty, one of the models which was used in the Northern Ireland dispute, in the Irish dispute, which was attempted in the India-Pakistan four-point uh, Musharraf formula, 
and which could be relevant here also. But we haven't reached that stage. It's a question of joint sovereignty. So besides leasing, there is a question of joint sovereignty. Mr. Oli and Foreign Minister Pradeep Dehwali have both said that we can let India use this road. The, the new road that they have, we have constructed. And by uh, the same token, Kalapani can stay where Kalapani is. But again, these are, I think, very distant solutions. Something in the future, something where we, we must give this another shot, this question, this negotiation, this technical committee, and if we cannot reach a, uh, reach a solution, then what uh, Muni Sahib has said and what I have just mentioned, I have mentioned this point about uh, leasing. I have said that you give this te equal territory, uh, uh, lease of 335. Swapping of territories. Somewhere else. Swapping of territories. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank yeah. you very much, sir. These are uh, very valuable suggestions and um, which we may adopt in uh, different ways. Uh, yes, sir. Professor Muni, you wanted to say something, sir? So I just wanted to make on sovereignty question. When China and Vietnam signed their border, there is a 300 meter stretch on which the railway line between China and Vietnam operates. And they accepted on the actual control, actual possession and said that we will settle sovereignty issue later. So sometimes you can also separate between the possession and sovereignty. Like in Northern to... Ireland. In Northern uh, Ireland, exactly. Yes, but, yeah. uh, no, in Vietnam, it happened only in 2001. Re very recently, yeah. So there are, there are a number of uh, ways. Uh, I think we can, India and Nepal can very amicably resolve this uh, uh, very, uh, what at present we feel is a very, very, uh, the, uh, a sensitive issue definitely will remain sensitive, but no, no, sensitive, can... uh, 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 Boslaji, sensitive it has been made. I'm sorry, I am again introducing a subject which may be of a problematic. You know, it comes out of the greater Nepal uh, argument, the entire argument. There are people who are saying we want greater Nepal back. It is like our, uh, you know, that uh, late leader of Tamil Nadu who said, I want my Kachathivu back. See, there are which are all distorted arguments. They are not very clear arguments, which vitiate the entire atmosphere, which I and you are sitting here and trying to create that we must have a good atmosphere. But if you take an extreme position, that this or nothing, then uh, you can't move forward. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much, sir. Now I will come on to our final part, that is the recommendations uh, as to how to resolve. I think we have discussed a lot of them, but I'll just request the speakers now to pointedly say, okay, how we can really get over this present uh, a situation where both countries have uh, taken a particular stand and how we, uh, whether they come down from that and how we get dialogue, of course, in general, dialogue is very much agreed by all the speakers. Uh, that is the way ahead. But what specific should be done in the immediate uh, time frame, which can reduce these tensions for which are ongoing. May I start with uh, Mr. Raju Nepal? Uh, would you like to take on service? Um, yes, sir. Again, as you said, uh, the only thing is to uh, acknowledge uh, Nepal's point by Indian government. What, what has been done because uh, almost everything uh, from Nepal is on record and is from the government side and Indian government has uh, just issued one or two statements saying that this, uh, the map is not accepted. That's all. Um, now, Indians should uh, accept uh, what's happening in Nepal and what Nepal is doing. Was, they should take a note, I mean, they should take a note. And COVID-19 definitely have stopped a few things, our uh, movement and all, but business is going on. The government is running, so many things is happening. Like we are here from different part of the country and you are in India, I, I'm in Nepal. Something, something might start, should start. Something, at least something should start. If you start dialogue between Nepal and India and the, uh, at the ground level, uh, uh, people will stop com complaining. People will stop complaining. Why every Nepali is complaining? Because India is not responding. India is not at all responding. 
So this is the only thing. And 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 there should at least India should say something about why army chief has said this in, from the political level. Oh. They, that should be. The, it is not something army army chief should, should have been said. He should have been come in between. He should have been come in between. Yeah, we agree. The the uh, uh, Mr. Mehta has said very clearly that uh, so many things our prime minister would not have said in the parliament. I I, I agree. But that's domestic politics. We take it in a different way. That's a domestic politics. Uh, but at the same time, you have implied so many things. India should not have done this. India should not have done this. Now, my request to you gentlemen is India should be doing this now. The focus is India should be doing this. Only one way, in my opinion, to resolve is let's find out the solution. What is the originating point of the Kali River? And when Mr. Mehta said name Kala Pani or Kalo Pani, Please, I request you don't go to that type of things. If you go to the Eastern Nepal, you will find so many places in Nepal with this Kanchan body, this body and all, which came from uh, Bengal side. If you go to the Western Nepal, you'll say Nepal guns, this guns and that one, which has come from the UP side, name from the UP side and all. That name has nothing to do. It's a Kalopani or Kalapani. You know, There's so many even. I live in the place which is Lalitpur. Is it Indian name? No. The name has nothing to do, whether it is a Kalo or Kala. Uh, that doesn't mean Kalo means Kala means Indian name and Kala Kalo is Nepali name. That is not what it, that that is that doesn't justify anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, my request at well, immediately within a week or uh, ten days, uh, India should respond to what is happening in Nepal. Uh, some diplomacy should start instead of uh, you know the, 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 our the, um, parliament will definitely pass the new map as you have seen my background where we started using this map everywhere even at our home. Even at that, that's the sentiment at Nepal. So that should be regarded. That should be regarded and parliament will definitely pass this map and that should be taken very positively by the Indian side and start dialogue. That's all, sir. So you want, uh, what you're suggesting that uh, as early as possible, uh, the two sides uh, should start dialogue in an official way, uh, whether it is at the, uh, possibly something is already going on in the back channel, if it is going that on will the not back channel, stop. That but, will not but, stop the. You but know, we should get on in the in the front. The dialogue yeah. should happen in the front window, right? I, At least people right. should know that dialogue is starting. Otherwise, people will write. Tweets will be posted uh, in Nepal and India, and the, the newspapers will be writing these, that, and all. But if you know, if people of both the countries know that dialogue has officially started, uh, then these type of rumors will be stopped coming in. Oh, and so that's right. That's right. That there'll be a lesson. Uh, the uh, heat on the street will get reduced. Possibly yes. uh, there'll be some cooling off. Uh, Mr. Yes. Vishnu, uh, may I have your views sir? What, what should be done immediately or what can be done, what can be done rather to sort of reduce uh, the present ongoing tension? Sir? Yes, uh, uh, even in my opening statement, I have clearly mentioned that the negotiation and dialogue is the only way to resolve our outstanding issues. We have already agreed that this is the disputed territory and we will sit together and we will find uh, uh, amicable solution of this uh, uh, problem. So I believe that we have a strong leadership in both countries, Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Oli. They both have a very strong position in domestic politics also. In India, Prime Minister Modi has resolved many outstanding and many pending issues uh, in a successful way. I request to Indian government, Indian authority, and uh, especially the political leadership of India that please retrospect one, please uh, rediscuss once so why Nepal is not happy with you being a so close country, being a so uh, as old traditional relationship, so specific and unique relationship. What is the cause behind this? Nepali people are feeling that India is not dealing with us properly. So, if our leadership uh, uh, pick up a call, Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Oli pick up a call, and us even a single call will be sufficient to diffuse the tension, to de-escalate the situation. I have already mentioned you that we have a established mechanism uh, the, for uh, the, uh, one of the important is the foreign secretary level mechanism. The second is the foreign minister level uh, joint commission. And after that, uh, the, both prime ministers are uh, responsible for all the things. So I hope that, uh, yes, there is still a scope of uh, um, back channel talks also. I hope that uh, it has already been started uh, and uh, the official level negotiation should be started soon without delay. 
without uh, giving uh, much space to uh, talk negatively to the people. Yes, in both sides, uh, we have seen some provocative statement. And especially, I would like to request uh, our Indian intellectual diplomats uh, who are widely respected here, widely seen here, widely hear here. Please use proper language, respect sentiment of Nepali language, ne sorry, Nepali people, and please respect the, our age old tradition. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bishma. Uh, General Mehta, sir, would you like to uh, say what final recommendations, what you'd like to cover? Uh, before I uh, make my recommendations, I would urge uh, the Nepalis on this panel and the other Nepalis to please look at these maps, uh, the alleged maps, the old map and the new map, over which this row started in November. So those maps must be looked at, number one. Number two, I agree entirely that uh, the remarks made by our chief of army staff, who is also the honorary general of the Nepal army, uh, were inadvisable. And uh, as far as uh, talks are concerned, I would say that, uh, and I've said this earlier, and I'll say this again, that uh, we can have a virtual meeting. At the moment, India's, the ball is in India's court because uh, India said initially that they will speak after the pandemic. After Prime Minister Oli's remarks and the maps, the government of India has said that Nepal must create an atmosphere that is conducive for talks. Now that is the last statement by the government of India, that the ball now is in the Nepalese court. Because India has said that I'm giving you the official position. This is not what I am saying. This is what the government of India is saying, that Nepal has to create the conditions for dialogue. I am saying that unconditional dialogue should start immediately, and this can happen as a virtual meeting between the two foreign secretaries, and they, they can lay out a roadmap of how to proceed further uh, post COVID-19. But we must break the ice now through a virtual meeting and not wait for uh, Nepal to create the atmosphere or for Nepal to say that, no, we didn't get a date for the meeting. Unconditional. Let bygones be bygones. Let's start this dialogue immediately. Thank you very much, sir. I think a very uh, strong uh, and a very positive uh, statement made that if dialogue is to be held, and by, I'm sure by Nepali uh, uh, the colleagues on the panel will agree to that, that this is what is possibly yeah. one way we can start immediately. Professor Prem, sir, Professor Prem, may I request you to kindly make your final comments and our yeah, recommendations? I yeah, I also agree with my previous panelists. Yeah, diplomatic dialogue is the main tool to find the border solution because in, in, in our history, our relations between India and our Nepal, we have different problems in the past. For example, we can talk about in 2018, Kodari Highway case, or 2008 uh, Indian checkpoints in the northern side. And uh, we can talk about in 2045, uh, while Nepal bring the military equipment from China, and we have the different ups and downs in the relation. We solve those types of relations through diplomatic dialogue. Like same way, we can solve the border dispute also in diplomatic diplomatic uh, dialogues. Uh, like same way, I agree with my previous colleagues that uh, we need to solve those types of problems uh, through diplomatic dialogue. In the in the first point, we need to create a positive atmosphere for diplomatic dialogue to solve the boundary issue. First, we need to create the virtual meeting between uh, both Indian and uh, Nepali prime minister level or foreign minister level or foreign secretary level, and we, we need to create the ice break and we need to create, create the positive atmosphere for the for the uh, diplomatic dialogue. And in that case, we have the different uh, different. Uh, 
actors they are like the media intellectual and different peoples they have the positive role to create the uh, positive atmosphere for diplomatic dialogue they have the like a positive catalyst instead of negative catalyst sometimes these media or the intellectual or different people they create bad uh, or negative catalyst they wants to um, create the bad information uh, among among the different countries that's why we need a constructive role of media intellectual and peoples to create the positive atmosphere for uh, diplomatic dialogues between uh, india and nepal i think only diplomatic dialogue is the uh, solution to solve the border dispute between india and nepal thank you uh, thank you sir this early diplomatic dialogue professor modi sir may i request yes, your final uh, yeah a couple of points one um, raju ji is uh, i mean everybody is saying india should did not do anything to dialogue i let us have, make the background very clear with us the two technical teams were talking to each other two di diplomatic level lower channels they were talking to each other and when they came to the point that they can't agree to each other's position there is an official understanding i underline official understanding that until then a status quo would be maintained so long as we cannot resolve these points this is mutually agreed officially agreed that we will maintain a status quo on these issues now that a status quo has been uh, uh, disturbed in a way by uh, what india thinks is uh, nepal's issuing map and going to the parliament and saying things what nepal thinks is because of india issued a map and india built a road and uh, army chief said something these are the three points i agree that the army chief had no business to make political uh, statements we have we have said it in india without uh, not necessarily for nepalese we also say in fact even his predecessor we had raised objections about it that the army chief should not make any political statement the problem arises if our, uh, if army chief has been prompted by the political authorities to make that statement then there is a serious problem but i agree with you that he should not have made this statement but so far as the map and road is concerned i am reminded of a urdu sher if you want me to say that wo baat jiska fasane mein kahin zikr na tha wo baat unko bahut na gawar guzri hai our road and our map were not to offend nepal the map was really to show the kashmir position and the road was really to upgrade the infrastructure vis a vis the chinese आपने उसका इतना बुरा मान लिया पता नहीं मेरे हमारी समझ में नहीं आता ये ये आपको अब जैसा अशोक मेहता जी ने ठीक कहा हमारे पुराने वाले नक्शे में और नए नक्शे में कोई फर्क नहीं है इंटरनेशनल बाउंड्री को हमने नहीं छोड़ा है छेड़ा है उसको किसी ढंग से और आप देखिए ना आपका अपना नया मैप उठाइए ना जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के वक्त में ज्वाइन किया गया कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट की पोजिशन क्यों आई है क्योंकि जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के साथ आपने मैप लगाया है वो अलग मैप है अब जो बनाया है वो अलग मैप है तो ये प्रॉब्लम हमने नहीं क्रिएट की है हम आपसे बार बार ये कहना चाहते हैं दिस इज व्हाट वी वांट टू से एनीवे हैविंग हैविंग सेड दैट एंड एंड आई अगेन रिपीट दैट आई डोंट थिंक आर्मी चीफ शुड हैव मेड दिस स्टेटमेंट व्हिच ही मेड बट कमिंग बैक टू इट इट हैज ऑलरेडी बीन एग्रीड टू हैव अ फॉरेन सेक्रेटरी लेवल डिस्कशंस सो यू डोंट हैव टू क्रिएट एनीथिंग न्यू let the foreign secretary level discussions start the foreign secretaries will not talk major points unless they get the political clearance and therefore once they have settled the issue a political uh, solution can be brought about the only problem has been that india said after covid nepal says right now i would concede nepal's points right now okay let us start the talks if that is what which has created all the problems covid because they wanted to have a delegation level talks and they could not travel to each other there were practical difficulties but like this dialogue the foreign secretaries can sit down and now have a dialogue and lot of indian diplomacy is being conducted through wires these days yes through yes. through through these uh, technologies even so the prime minister no yeah so there is no harm you start the talk and whatever uh, comes out of it keeping all these things in mind लास्टली विष्णु जी एंड प्रेम जी देखिए हम लोग एकेडमिक को सरकारें नहीं मानती है सरकारों का अपना दिमाग होता है सर वे अंडरस्टैंड यू आर वेरी गवर्नमेंट्स हैव देयर ओन माइंड सर सर आई आई हैव टू नो यूज नो नो सर यू आर ऑफ नो यूज टू द गवर्नमेंट्स नो सर द गवर्नमेंट्स फाइंड्स दैट आई कैन यूज दिस 
Sir, I I I want to make a one only one point. Okay. When Indra Kumar Gujral was the Prime Minister, yes, I think you are the Indra person Kumar who Gujral advised. Indra Kumar Gujral is the Prime Minister. No, no, sir, sir. Let me. After that, he came to Hindustan. Mein. Let me complete, sir. I am. Right. Yes, when okay. Indra Kumar was Gujral was the Prime Minister, as yes, I think you are is one of the most important foreign policy advisor, and we people like Nepal, the small countries, the small neighbor of India. No, no, you are very, very kind of you. I am saying Indra Kumar Gujral, as the Prime Minister. डेढ़ साल से ज्यादा टिक नहीं पाया इस देश में ओके थैंक यू नेहरू नेहरू ऐसा था जो हमारे जैसे लोगों को कंसर्न करता था उसके बाद यहाँ कोई ऐसा प्राइम मिनिस्टर नहीं आया हु वांट्स टू जिसकी हिम्मत ये हो कि ब्यूरोक्रेसी से बाहर जाके वो लोगों की सलाह ले थैंक यू वेरी मच सर ये मेरा मानना है इंडिया की एनीवे छोड़िए थैंक यू वेरी मच जजमेंट थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर वंडरफुल पार्टिसिपेशन and uh, your uh, uh, very views i think what has emerged uh, the one point which has emerged very strongly is that there should be a dialogue and that dialogue should uh, start Im immediately if not urgently and by uh, whatever means possible possibly with the way we are interacting and that is i think one strong at message for secretary concern. level at foreign secretary level at, at the foreign secretary level it can start and it should start as early as possible i think that is a central message which i feel has emerged from our discussion thank you very much for the participation it has been a very uh, open participation and we will be putting up this discussion in the uh, we website of I idsa as well as ours i mean not idsa dsi the nepali nepali think tank and there we your views i hope are heard by the various people on the on both sides so that we can enlighten ourselves with this thank you very much sir thank you very much uh, mr nepal thank you very much professor mohni thank you very much professor prem Uh, Mr. Bishnu and uh, General Betha and General Shetty, thank you very much for participation. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.